Okay, so um, so that's what this, this the hyperbolic sine function looks like. Okay, and so as I just said, when alpha l is between uh, is kind of between zero and one, then the hyperbolic sine squared of alpha l is is roughly is approximately equal to alpha l. Okay, it's roughly linear in this regime, and so um, that can help us calculate things under in, in that limit. <coughs> When alpha l is much, is greater than one, okay, so so in that corresponding to when x is greater than one here, then um, then the sine squared, the the hyperbolic sine squared, the the sinh squared alpha l increases very fast, and so this means that the transmission coefficient decreases because if this numerator is getting very big and the whole thing is inverted, um, then uh, your your transmission coefficients, your tunneling probability is going to is going to go down very fast. So in particular, the tunnel probability um, decreases when the uh, how do, how do, how can we make that how can we um, what affects the tunnel probability? What are the obvious things? Well, when the when the l when the width of the barrier goes up, then that means that uh, the, the argument of the hyperbolic sine it uh, gets larger, and as we just said, it doesn't have to get very very big for the uh, for this uh, cinch square to get very large. Again, and since it's uh, inverted, that corresponds to the uh, tunnel probability t going down um, significantly. Uh, also, when the mass goes up, okay, then the uh, the tunnel probability will go down. Where does that come? Well, alpha, if you remember is equal to um, alpha is equal to square root of 2m u, u naught minus e over h bar so when when the mass gets big so when you talk about some sort of macroscopic particle then um, the mass is very big and so uh, that will make alpha very large <coughs> when alpha is very large then this uh, the hyperbolic sine function is very large and um, again, their tunnel probability will go down. So, in the in the sort of macroscopic limit, limit that is the classical limit, when you have a particle which has a kind of a macroscopic scale mass, then what we see is that we in fact won't get tunneling. Okay, so it agrees with what we'd expect classically. This is another example of the correspondence principle. And furthermore, when the barrier height is very big, and and when the um, energy is, is uh, uh, much, much less than the barrier height. And again, if we look at our expression for alpha, so when u naught is really big and e is really small, then basically uh, this this is goes this uh, alpha go, uh, is proportional to the square root of u naught. And um, so when when u naught gets really big, when u naught gets big, then um, and especially compared to e, then we get um, then we'll also have very low probability for tunneling. Okay, so if your if your particle comes in with very low energy compared to the to a very tall barrier height, then you won't get tunneling. Okay, um, so as you get as your particle, that's the other thing to point out, is if your particle, if the energy of your particle, the particles in your beam, is getting close to you not, okay, then um, then this then this is actually getting small. So when E approaches you not that's get small and your tunnel probability then then that means that um, um, alpha is getting small, okay? And so your tunnel probability um, will will be uh, going up. Okay. Alright. So I just one one I wanted to point out that uh, the particles are actually tunneling through the barrier. Okay, they're not um, hopping over it somehow. Their energy is not fluctuating in some strange way, which takes them over the barrier. They're actually tunneling through the barrier. And this is a this is a really if you think about this, this is a really amazing thing. This is this is something which classical mechanics just cannot uh, cannot uh, deal with, cannot cope with. Okay, and I, the, other, the in your book there in um, in in chapter six and uh, section 6.3, they give a nice description and discussion about how tunneling is important for things like alpha decay, for the scanning tunneling microscope, for the inversion of, um, of molecules and stuff. So you should, you should read that.